Praise God, hallelujah. We have uh, several prayer requests. Sister Emerlita Lingbawan, complete healing from Goiter. And we will pray that uh, there will be no need uh, uh, undergo operation, no no more operation, praise God. Sister Janet uh, Bambara, healing from lump in her lungs. Uh, she is already confined in Rotonji Hospital. Praise God. So let us remember them. Brother Jewel Buhia, praise God for the fast recovery and a miracle healing in his body. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let us all remember this. And shall we stand? Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Emerlita Lingbawan, Janet Bambara, and Brother Joel Buhia. Let us bow down our head. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for all the mercies that you have shown to us. This is the last Sunday of the year. And thank you for all the victories that you have given to us. At this moment, Lord, Sister Emerlita Lingbawan, we are praying, God, that there will be a complete healing, O Lord, on her greater, O Lord. And I pray that the doctors will no longer have an operation, O God, and there's a miracle, O God, of healing. Sister Janet Mambara, Lord, we are praying, God, that you will touch her lungs right now and bless the doctors that, hallelujah, take care of her, the medicines that she's going to take. It will be effective in the name of Jesus. And we are praying for Brother Jewel Buhia, Lord God, that there will be fast recovery and normal, hallelujah, function of all the parts of his body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. We send the spirit of healing right now in the name of Jesus because by your stripes we were healed. In Jesus' name, clap your hands if you believe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may not take your seats. Praise God. I'm going to read the announcement. Uh, Pastor Librado. Uh, hallelujah. January 2, uh, 2022. Communion service and foot washing. Uh, foot washing must be by schedule. Two units every Sunday. First Sunday will go to unit 1 and 2 and goes on the next Sunday will be 3 and 4 until uh, the fifth Sunday. Uh, the men and the youth, I think, will be the last. Uh, to all unit coordinators, please send your 2021 annual report from your respective units. Uh, the deadline for submission is January 2, uh, 2022. Please submit to Pastor Librado or photocopy your reports and send it to uh, Pastor Librado's IPB Messenger account. January 23, 2022, Congregational Prayer and Fasting and Unit Coordinator's Prayer. Praise God. Uh, thank you so much and may the Lord will bless us all. Are you ready for the word of the Lord? Yes. To our guests and visitors, thank you for coming and we are so happy to have you this afternoon. Praise God. And after the service, uh, leaders and coordinators will remain. Praise God for your uh, activities, for our activities. Praise God. Hallelujah. And let me begin, praise God, my message this afternoon by saying that we begin 2021 with online preaching. We begin, praise God, hallelujah, with some teachings on, uh, on our social media accounts, our official IPB accounts. And we thank the Lord we survived and then... The Lord has uh, given us an opportunity to have like 80% before, praise God, of our attendance. And thank the Lord that for the last uh, two and a half years, the Lord had protected us against this COVID virus. Yeah. And we will continue to pray that the Lord will uh, protect us against another variants like Omicron and other, praise God, uh, name of those variants. I know that the power of the Lord is power, uh, will always cover us. And let us also maintain our hygiene and all the protocols, praise God, uh, being uh, given by the health department. Praise the Lord. So, Christmas is past, praise God. And there are some questions if Christians would celebrate Christmas. But I will give you a text in the Bible that Reverend Bernard had given, praise God, in his uh, podcast. In Romans chapter 14, verse uh, 5 and 6, 
One man esteem it one day above another. Another esteem it every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And he told us that this is a verse until verse 6 about Christian liberty. He that regarded the day, if you believe that December 25, December 24, or whatever date, praise God, you regarded it unto the Lord, and he that regarded not the day, to the Lord, he that not regarded, he that eat it, eat it to the Lord. Pag ikaw ay palakain, basta magpasalamat ka, walang problema. For he gave it God thanks. And he that eat it not, to the Lord he eat it not, and give it God thanks. So if you celebrate Christmas as unto the Lord, do it as unto the Lord. If you don't believe, do it also as unto the Lord. In other words, praise God, that's Christian liberty. Don't ridicule those who believe it. And those who don't practice, don't also ridicule and mock them. Everybody shout praise the Lord. So Christmas is past. Pass in our experience this year. Pass in the sin before us in the Bible. Praise God. And we believe the story that we have preached last uh, this week. Praise God. The worship of the wise men came after the birth of Christ. We are not sure just how long after his birth. Because in Matthew chapter 2, verse 16, we had been up to two years. Praise the Lord. So when it was time to depart for them, they were warned of God. Everybody shout, they were warned of God. There are many warnings in the Bible actually. Joseph was also warned in the text. And God has special purposes in his warnings. Everybody shout, God has special purposes in his warnings. Can you show it, Atikat? Praise God, hallelujah. God has special purposes in his warnings. Praise God. And I will bring to you a topic this afternoon, the warnings of God. Shall we open our Bible in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11 to 15, and I asked you to stand for a while, praise God. Time check is uh, 2.55, and I have 20 minutes remaining. The Bible said, And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worship him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and mare. Verse 12. And being warned of God, look at this word. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Verse 13. And when they, had, and they, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise! And take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. That's what the angel said. Be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Verse 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Last verse. And was there... Until the death of Herod. So Jesus stay in Egypt until the death of Herod. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Everybody shout that line. Out of Egypt have I called my son. The warnings of God. May the Lord will bless us all and by the power of God, Hallelujah, He will lead my tongue to speak the words that really what we need this afternoon. And just open your heart. You mean I'll take your seats. Hallelujah. I said God has a special purposes in His warnings. Number one, God's warnings are to, be, are to change the direction of our lives. Warnings are very important because His warnings are to change the direction of our lives. As what the Bible said in verse 12, they departed in their own country another way. If we are going to review the way they came, uh, they had come, they arrived in Jerusalem, and when they arrived in Jerusalem, summoned to meet with Herod, and then they did not go back by the same road. Everybody shout amen. amen. So meeting Christ by faith changes the way we take in life. When we meet the Lord Jesus Christ, 
Praise God, I believe that you will return to the Philippines with a changed light, a changed attitude, changed perspective. Amen. Everybody shout amen. amen. Because warnings are very familiar in the Bible. We have lots of verses, praise God, that talks about warning. I will show you in Amos chapter 4, verse 12. This is what the Bible said, Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. This warning is not just for the Jewish nation. This warning and this verse is not just for them, but even for us that we need to prepare, praise God, to meet our God. Yeah. Everybody shout amen. amen. Romans chapter 6 verse 23, there is a warning. Hallelujah. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we continue to live in sin, there is death. But if we will praise God, receive the Lord and stop, hallelujah, living in sin, there is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. The Bible said, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. This is a warning. Pag tayo po ay pabagdoy-bagdoy sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon, God will paluise you, mga kapatid. That's King James Version. Hallelujah. <laughs> now Paul took the light from heaven as a warning in Acts chapter 9. The light from heaven that struck him, that made him blind and he fall down, hallelujah, from the horse or what? Praise God, from that animal that he was riding. Praise God. Paul took the light from heaven as a warning. In Judah chapter 2, Judah saw his time, hallelujah, in the valley of the great fish as a warning. That running away from God is not a good decision. Yeah. Has God sent a warning to you? Yeah. Has God sent a warning to you? Yeah. Hallelujah. Maybe by a dream? Did God send a dream to warn you? Yeah. Anybody here an experience that you, God has warned you by a dream? There are, praise God. How about God warn you by a sermon? Through preaching and teaching, God warn you. How about by a crisis? God warns you through a crisis. How about a setback? You try to renew your contract and then that your employer said, Chao la. Pack up your things. Praise God, but... It was not them, but God uses it as a warning. Everybody shall praise the Lord. Number two, God's warning are to deliver us from the destroyer. He gives warning, praise God, to save us, to deliver us from the destroyer. In verse 13, the Bible said, Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. That is why God sent the warning so that baby Jesus, hallelujah, will not be destroyed in the hands of a cruel king. Praise God. So when we read the word of God and there is a warning there, or there is a warning through preaching, there is a warning through teaching, God is delivering you from the destroyer. Because Herod's aim, when he talked to the wise men, praise God, he talked about worship, but intended wickedness. Herod said, find the young child because I want to worship him also. But in his heart, he intend to kill Jesus. Sometimes in the church, people will say, oh, I will worship the Lord. We talk so much worship in the church, but if in our hearts, nandyan pa rin ang mga kabit, mga, mga relasyon na hindi ayon sa kaluban ng Panginoon. Advance, happy new year. Praise God. <laughs> It's easy to talk about worship. Hallelujah. But if we have anger, hallelujah, in our heart, praise God, if there are bad intentions in our heart, if there are bad motives in our heart, praise God, we, we, we will be like Herod, praise God. Herod was talking about of dedication, but intended destruction. He wants to destroy the Messiah. Now Herod typifies Satan. The destroyer. Herod is a type of Satan. 
Good in talking about worship, but their heart is not right with God. Good in talking about dedication, pero hindi naman tutuhanin, mga kapatid. John chapter 10, verse 10. Hallelujah! The Bible said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have light, and that they might have it more abundantly. Clap your hands, hallelujah, to Jesus. Satan wants to destroy Jesus. But the Bible said Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan. Yes. Verse John chapter 3 verse 8, Jesus came to destroy the works of the destroyer. Look at here, he that committed sin is of the devil. I repeat it again. Maybe this is a warning for us. He that committed sin is of the devil. Even your face looks like an angel. If you continue to commit sin, you are of the devil. For the devil seen it from the beginning. And for this purpose, here we go. Why there is Christmas? Why Christ was born in the manger? For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that He might destroy the works of the devil. If you have Jesus, you are capable to destroy the works of the devil. If you have the presence of Jesus, you have the power to destroy, to tramp on serpents and scorpions. Sabi ng iba, mahirap daw mamuhay na isang kristyano. Hindi. When you invite Jesus in your heart, it's not difficult, hallelujah, to walk with God. It's not difficult to serve the Lord. Hallelujah, because at the very first place, He already destroyed the works of the devil. Everybody shall praise the Lord. Number three, and this is the last. God's warning are to direct us in the design of His word. What was number one? God's warning are to change the direction of our lives. God's warning are to deliver us from the destroyer. And the last thing is this. God's warning are to direct us into the design of His Word. The Lord will warn you. The Lord will remind you this is the way. Hallelujah. So that your life and my life will be fitted, or it will fit to the design of His Word. Everybody shout amen. amen. Verse 15 in the same verse, that it might be fulfilled. Look at this word, that it might be fulfilled. The angel told Joseph, you must take away the child with you to Egypt because Herod is looking to destroy him. And since they were poor, Joseph and Mary, according to the Bible scholars, used the gold, the gift of gold, praise God, to finance their trip going to Egypt. And the angel said, stay there until you will receive a word. And when Hero died, the angel appeared again in a dream. You can go back now. Hallelujah to Bethlehem. Here we go. And when Joseph and Mary went back to Bethlehem carrying the baby Jesus, the Bible said Joseph was so fearful because he learned that Archelaus, the son of Herod, is the one who reigned in that region. That is why he went to Nazareth. And the Bible said, to, so that the Bible will be fulfilled, that he will be called in Nazarene. So even the fear of Joseph, praise God, hallelujah, was even used so that he will decide to go to Nazareth to fulfill the scripture that Jesus will be called in Nazarene. You have no idea why you come here in Hong Kong in the first place before spiritual things. You just come here in Hong Kong for economic reasons. You just come here, praise God, to build maybe your house or to buy your lot, praise God, or to buy a car or to find a foreigner. But there was Sunday that you walk in worldwide in the Statue Square, praise God, or in Sik Tong Choi, or in Wan Chai on the other side. Someone, hallelujah, had invited you to come into the church. Hallelujah. And the Lord has opened your heart. The Lord, hallelujah, praise God, have blessed your spirit. 
and you understand the plan of salvation. Praise God! Napakaswerte nyo, state side pa kayo mga kapatid, dito pa kayo na-convert. Can you raise your hands those who are being converted in the Philippines? In the Philippines. Okay, now, those who are converted here in Hong Kong. Just imagine, God has given you a passport, a contract, a good employer, so that one day you will come into the house of the Lord. God is good. And we learn His Word. We, we, we learn to live in His Word. And there are lots of warnings here, praise God, so that He can direct us to the design of His Word. God intends to bring our lives into line with the Bible. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Egypt, a symbol in Scripture of the world. Egypt is a symbol of the world according to the Scripture. Praise God. But God is calling His people out of the world. When the angel told Joseph and Mary, run for your life, run for the baby, escape, flee into Egypt. The angel did not just flee to Syria, flee to Lebanon, flee to Iraq. But the angel said, flee to Egypt in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. I will call my son out of Egypt. Egypt is a type of the world. Where did we came from? We came from sin. We came from, hallelujah, the life and the last of this world. But the Bible said, I called my son out of Egypt. I called my son and daughters out of this world. And this is the ecclesia, the called out ones. And we are here, worshiping together, lifting up the name of Jesus who changed me and who changed you. Thank God for the warning. First John chapter 2, verse 15 to 16. Hallelujah. This is what the Bible said. First John chapter 2, verse 15 to 16. Love not the world. Don't love the world. Hallelujah. Tinawag ka na ng Panginoon eh. Palabas. Para dalhin ka sa iglesia. And the church, praise God, will bring you to heaven. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16, hallelujah. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Is your life governed by the Bible? Now this is a nice question. Is your life governed by the Bible? Because if your life is governed by the Bible, the Lord, hallelujah, will send situations. Praise God, hallelujah, that your life will fit to the design of His Word. God sends His warnings in different ways. The wise men and Joseph were warned through dreams. We may be warned through circumstances or even by His Word. Have you experienced a warning from God? Are you willing to allow Him to change the direction of your life? Yeah. If one day, maybe today, or maybe in the preaching of Pastor Librado, or maybe some, praise God, in 2022, or maybe in online preaching, or online Bible studies, praise God, will you allow God to change the direction of your life when you receive a warning from Him? He will deliver you from the destroyer. He will deliver you from the destroyer if you listen to the warning of God. And He will reveal His will to you. Did you hear me? He will reveal His will to you. Sometimes for our ladies, praise God, they are so confused. Pastor, there's an American guy that wants to court me. Will I say yes or I will say no? Praise God. There's a brown guy. There's a blue guy. Ano ba ngayon? By color na ba talaga? But if your life, praise God, is governed by the word of God, hallelujah, He will reveal His will to you. Everybody shout praise the Lord. 
And He will lead you into the wonderful design of His Word. Did you hear that? He will lead us into the wonderful design of His Word. If we will always take heed to the warnings of God. Pastor Librado, go back. It's your time. Praise God. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Open your heart to the word of the Lord. Everybody shall praise the Lord. So every time you read your Bible, every time, to all the Bible school students, thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have just finished your exams. And there, we send a lot of warnings. <laughs> Praise God. We told you, we are told you that the exam would be like this. True or false. <laughs> fill in the blanks. Praise God. Asking for some scriptures. And we told you to check every pages. Praise God. So that you will not miss an answer. But I know some others, praise God, miss those questions because of so much pressure. Everybody shout amen. amen. Just imagine the answer is Almon and then she writes Salmon, praise God. <laughs> That's pressure. Everybody shout Amen. It's okay if I will ask what kind of fish. <laughs> but thank God, all of them had passed, praise God. In my subject, I don't know the doctrine, if you will retake or not. But I believe the Lord has blessed you so much. So, this is the last Sunday, and I have no more to say. Because I'm waiting for Pastor Librado. Praise God. Thank you of your prayers. Thank you of your dedication. Thank you, praise God, of your cooperation and submission, praise God, to the leadership. May the Lord will bless New Life Fellowship. May the Lord will bless Putan, Discovery Bay, the men and the youth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord as Pastor Bobby. Praise God. We'll share the word. Everybody say, praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Those who are excited today, say amen. amen. Say to your neighbor, I am, I am excited. Praise God. Because I have a warning. Amen. Warning is a very important thing in our life. Anywhere you go in Hong Kong, there are some warnings that you can see. Around the corner. Amen. Walk away. Debris is falling down. Don't close. Amen. 50 feet, 50 feet. Inflammable. Danger. Ahead. There are many warnings. Why warnings given? For our safety. That's the reason why God really loves us. He gives us always warning. Sometimes it's so deep, it's so hurt. But if you accept that warning, it will lead you into eternity. Amen. Shall we say praise the, praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Warning. You must be only one husband. Yes. You must be only one wife. Yes. And you believe only one God. Yes. And that name is... Do not believe in three gods or three person. Believe in one God. Because God manifests in the flesh. Justify in the spirit. Seen of the angels. Receive up into glory. And that name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But that's not my message. I just only try to collaborate. Pastor Plaza's message. I remember one day when Jesus departed from Judea, from Galilee, went to Samaria. 
And of course, during that time, there's no MTR. There is no buses. Amen. It's a long distance uh, walk from Samaria, uh, from Judah, uh, Judea to Samaria in the place of Sikar with his apostle. As in a human form of our Lord Jesus Christ, he got tired, right? So he sit down beside the well of Jacob. And in the middle of the day, there was a Samaritan woman came to fetch the water. Give me the text, Sister Katrina. And when Jesus saw this woman, he, he told to the woman, give me to drink. And the woman astonished because he knows that the Jews and the Samaritan, there's no such dealing with each other. They never communicate with each other. Amen. Why you are asking me that give me to drink? And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who is that saith thee, give me to drink, the waters have asked of him, and he would have given you the living water. Everybody say praise the Lord. So this afternoon, I would like to connect this uh, scripture to the title of my message, Christmas without snow. You know, for some people, Pastor Lewis, especially people that living in a northern part of the world, Amen. Christmas without snow, it seems like it's strange to them. Yeah, if you live in a northern part of the world. But we are living in Asia, right? And sometimes it's, not only, it's just only a new, ter new territory. And just a little. Shall we say amen? So it nearly never happens, church. And it is almost a magical thing. To lock out on Christmas morning, give me slide, Sister Katrina, and see the fresh blanket of snow that covering the ground on Christmas morning. Shall we say amen? amen. Because without it, it just doesn't slide Christmas on them. On their personal feeling. If you are living on the northern part of the world, they can have Christmas dinner because the snow is around in their houses. Family get together, open Christmas gift that what we did uh, in the night of 24, our, my family have their own gifts. We have a gift giving. Amen. It's difficult to a father. Amen. You should give every one of your kids. And only my wife are not <laughs> receive my gift. But I told her, just come with me one day and we have a shopping around. Point what you want. And I will buy it for you. Kung kaya ng power ko. So we open Christmas gifts. Everyone can sing Christmas carols. But without the snow, it is just doesn't seem like Christmas for them. Maybe in California, maybe or in Arizona, but not here in Asia. Shall we say amen? amen. I remember one of our pastor, if you remember Pastor uh, Jimenez, no? Pastor James Smith, one of our preacher. I read on his line and he said on his testimony because he had a personal experience in his ministry. And he said, 
A few years ago, I went through a newly opened McDonald's. I placed my order and I have two cheeseburger ketchup only. Price with drink. And I fall up, pull out to the window and pay my food and grab it and drive off. And about two blocks down the street, I try to open and bite into one of my cheeseburgers, ketchup only. And he said, something is missing. The bun was there. The ketchup was there. But the burger was missing on both sandwiches. And it's very seriously. He said on his story. And I went back on the restaurant and asked for the magic manager of McDonald's. And when she came to the front, I asked jokingly, Pastor Smith said, where is the beef? She was embarrassed to say the least. Amen. He checked the order slip. And he said, amen. While, while, while he is looking, oh yeah, I'm very sorry. I will replace it for a new one. And Pastor Smith said, you know, ma'am, a cheeseburger just is not a cheeseburger without the burger. Right? Yes, sir. And my point in my message this morning is, and it's just, it's not Christmas also without snow. Right? For the northern people. At least if you live in a northern part of the world where there is snow on Christmas. Hello. And there is also another thing that happened at Christmas time that if not, just doesn't seem like Christmas. Because of Christmas, this is the season of giving gift. I've already given some away and I've already received some. Last 24 of December at night. And I have heard people see also that because they could not afford to give gift of Christmas time, that the Christian, that Christmas, Christian, oh, what you call that? That Christmas, it seems like Christmas because there was no gift exchange. In their thinking, that's their, what you call that? Yung nagisnan banila na theory. Amen? Tradition. For them, Christmas did not come to their home. Hello. It just doesn't seem like Christmas because they are no gift giving. Hello? Amen. I grew up church in a simple barangay of Pangasinan. And there were many times as a child when the tree was either empty or had gifts from a local charity. For me, in my mind setting, it is not Christmas before. But that's not the way you need to celebrate the real meaning of Christmas. Hallelujah. Because I want to tell you this afternoon, folks. There is a wonderful gift that mentioned many times in the New Testament. That was the result of our Lord Jesus Christ. Born in Bethlehem and his life death here on earth. There is a special gift, even though you don't even receive gift, but there is something gift that the Lord brought out, brought it in your life. Shall we say amen? And I want that gift today, church. Remember that God wants us to experience that wonderful gift today. It is the Holy Ghost. Woo! The reason you are on this planet earth and breath, hallelujah, so that God can fill your soul. A wonderful gift of Holy Spirit. If you know, hallelujah, the, the Jesus said to the woman, if you know whom asking you the water, you was asking him and he will give you a living water. 
Hallelujah! If you believe today in new life, before you step out in this room, hallelujah, there will be a gift giving today. And this is a free gift of the Holy Ghost. Come on, clap your hands for the glory of God. Woo! It's not about the snow. It's not about the gift that given to you. It is the gift, hallelujah, from the Lord. And He is willing to give it to you today. Because the Holy Ghost is more than a gift. Even though it call it, it, call it gift. That's what Acts 2.38 says. In the New Living Translation, give me click Katrina. He said, then Peter said... In King James Version. But in, in Ivy, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin and you will receive what? You will receive what? The gift. Everybody say, I want the gift. This is a very key. That God wants you to receive today. I am blessed church. Since we started our prayer morning devotion. Last February 9 or I don't know. I, I know it's February 9 or 6. What, what February 9. Since then sister Mimpa. He is here now. Physically meet her. Itong kapatid natin to hindi pa baptized. But almost every morning, he was there. Praise God, giving hallelujah a comments. He said, it seems like he is a long time believer. Because the word that she, that she responded, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I love you Jesus. That's all the word that I always read on her response. And Sister Carlosa said, Pastor, that uh, one sister Mempa is coming to Hong Kong, he will ready to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But today, before you bury sister Mempa, you should receive first that gift of the Holy Spirit. This is a special gift for you, my friend. Woo! Hallelujah. Because Jesus said to the woman, you know, woman, if you drink the water that I give to you, you will never thirst again. Hallelujah. And the woman said, give me that water. That I... Woo, come on. Hindi inurong ng Diyos ang kanyang kamay at pangako. Ibin God given to her the gift. That's why he became an evangelist. When this woman received the gift. Everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Actually they are almost 10 candidates for baptism. Jesus. And we're excited. One of the sisters in Hokkaido, Japan, he wants me to bury him in, in, tub, in, in the tub. Do even I not go there? He said, Pastor, I have a suggestion. I want to get baptized now. Can you please, we have an online baptism? <laughs> what is this? Cyber baptism? Because he wants to, to, to baptize immediately. The distance between the other church in Japan and Hokkaido is a very, very far distance. You take an airplane. If you use bus or any land transportation, it takes 30 hours trip. So it's difficult for our brethren in the other place of Japan to go in Hokkaido. That's why the candidate itself giving me an advice that I want to bury her. He went to the bathtub 
Amen. And we have the connection online. Hallelujah. And he tried to bury it himself. But you know, hindi imposibleng mangyayari yan. Sa darating na panahon, if there is another much more powerful than Omicron, hello? We don't have any choice if their people wants to get buried in water baptized in Jesus' name. Maybe, I don't know. On the future time. But this is an excitement thing, church. Because the Gentiles, they never had a part on this gift. They never had a part. But the time when Jesus turned around and looked the Gentile people, they had given them a chance also to be saved and receive that gift. Shall we say praise God? What the Bible said in Acts chapter 10 verse 45 in a living translation, the Jewish believer who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. We are the Gentiles before, but when God baptized in Jesus' name, we are now part of that gift that the Lord given to us. That's the reason why, church, hallelujah, you should grab the opportunity today be before you go out in this place. Lord, I need that baptism. I need that gift. Woo! Why, pastor? Because living the Christian life without the gift of the Holy Ghost is like a Christmas without the snow. Shall we say amen? It is just supposed to be there. It is accepted. God wants to give it to you today. And what a precious gift church that is. His spirit inside of you. That filling you every day with his love. And with his presence. And with his power. Shall we say amen? Why you are so really insisted that pastor that I need always to be filled on that spirit of God? What does it do to my life? Unang una, amen, if you want to know this, why God wants you to have always this gift. In Acts 1.8, it's a very clear. Hello? But ye shall receive power. Sabihin mo nga sa yung katabi, power. With the strong hands. Power. Hindi yung. There is an impact. That's the reason why God insisted to us to receive that power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be what? Witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. And in Samaria. And into the uttermost part of the earth. How are we going to reach the world church? If we do not have the Holy Ghost in our lives. Hello. How can we say to the oppressed, be free, if you don't have the power of God? Hallelujah. How can you command the demon possessed to be free, if you don't have that gift of the Spirit of God? How can you command the sickness to be healed, unless God's Spirit filled us? With that an overflowing power. Can we give a hand clap of praise? Woo. Listen to me, folks. People talk about the Christmas spirit. 
and how it brings people together and creates generosity and etc. in their lives. Let's not talk any of that down because honestly, this world needs a lot more that, more than that. Hello? Wouldn't you say that? But wouldn't be something if along with this Christmas spirit that affects some people's lives this time of year. They could all be filled with God's spirit all year. So just think of all the joy of the Holy Spirit could spread all the long year into this church, into your life, into your family church. And thank God, amen, for the Holy Spirit in our lives. It, it is what pushes us past our humanity and our inabilities because of the power of God. His Spirit enable us to do what we ordinarily wouldn't do or could not do for others because we have the anointing of the Spirit of God. Come on, clap your hands for the glory of God. Without the Holy Ghost, you would have an angry pastor every now and then. Right? Hello? People stop it, and we are that guys. Hello? But then the Holy Spirit put a love in our hearts for people. God choose me. Choose to Pastor Plaza why they are struggling to live for him. Hello. He put his spirit and grace in our heart. And I'm able to come here with this smile when I wouldn't ordinarily have one. Shall we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Every time I experience that, I experience too much trouble in my physical body. But I have seen always in your prayer, Pastor, pray for this name he is suffering something like this pero yung sarili ko ananay ko ouch his spirit put grace in my heart and I'm able to come in here with a smile when I wouldn't ordinarily have one the Holy Spirit helped me to love you so much. Amen. So I do. I love you very much. Okay, can I hear that also from you? Di ko narinig. Parang ngongo. Hallelujah. But if Christmas without snow... You are not excited if you are living in the north part of the world. So if you are a Christian, let me ask you, do you love everybody? Mas malakas dito. Do you love everybody? How? Nag-increase. Because if no, you need the Holy Ghost. You behave in Christmas without snow. Because the Bible says it will lead you and guide you into all truth. Everybody say amen. amen. There are certain people we used to hate if we don't have that power of the Holy Ghost. Now we love them because of the Spirit of God. Hello. How did that happen? Because of the Holy Ghost. It was just fine hating them, staying away from them, felt good. But because of the Holy Ghost, I got a loss out of hating them. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, but He's got me loving them, hugging them, hallelujah. Pray for them, helping them, hallelujah. It's just because of the gift of the Holy Ghost. So you know what you need today, church. God's wonderful people 
gift of the Holy Ghost what we need today. Everybody say praise the Lord. But God has a gift that he would like to give you today. And for those who have it already, why not be filled it in every day in our life? Hallelujah. That's what the Bible said in Lamentation 3, 3, 22 and 23. This is what the Bible said. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because His compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Every time that you woke up in the morning, hallelujah, you can have always that gift in your life. You can always activate with your worship, with your prayer, with your connection. Why? It preserved for you, the Bible said. Hallelujah. New every morning. This is what Paul desired. Paul 16 in 2 Corinthians, the Bible said, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward men perish, and yet the inward man, my soul, my heart is renewed. When? When? Day by day, even we don't have church, but every day, hallelujah, you must be renewed every day. Hindi ka lang dapat ma ng Sunday, but you need to be filled also in Monday, in Tuesday, hallelujah, every day. It's not by your work. It is not by your ability, church. Titus 3, 5. Not, my, my, not by works or righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. By the washing of renewed generation and renewing when of the Holy Ghost. Come on, give a hand clap of praise. I feel now the fire of the Holy Ghost. I, I need to close now because I'm excited. Hallelujah. That there are souls in the sanctuary need that gift. But I warn you as Pastor Plaza preaching. There is an enemy who always resists your worship, your revival. But God allowed that to put in your life. Amen? For you to grow. I remember one of the preaching of uh, Reverend Tisdale. He said, The enemy has you right where God wants you. Every day in your life, you can encounter him. That's the reason why God allowed that to come into your life. Why? Because Paul said, he admonished us in 69. The Bible said, For a great door and effectual is open unto me. Every day, there is always an opportunity in our life. If the Holy Ghost is living inside of you. But because of that, the enemy knows you. He reads your action. Your facial expression. But he cannot read your mind. He cannot read what is in your heart. But when you start to speak, he can hear you. If you start to react, he can see you. But God promised to us a great open door for your victory. And that is a very effectual for you to become victorious. But here in the other side of the situation, 
there are many adversaries. Hello. Every time you are trying to grow, there is adversaries. There is the spirit of resistance. But you need to hold on and stand on your faith. That God never leave you, nor forsake you. Come on, clap your hands for the glory of God. Sister Lucy, pananampalataya lang ang armas mo. But faith is not a concept that God, hallelujah, you will visit. But faith is something that you will possess. Why, Pastor? What kind of Bible you have if there was no opposition, if there was no enemy? Hello? Anong klaseng Bible ang meron tayo kapag walang opposition? What kind of life would you have without an adversary? What kind of life would you have without sickness? Could you call him healer? Are you with me? Without distress, would you call him peace? So can you tell to your neighbor, we need an enemy. <laughs> tama na, tama na. Dinig na, dinig na kayo ng kaaway. The enemy is aware on that. Bakit mo yan sinabi, Pastor? In the Bible itself, Pastor Lewis, There's no David without Goliath. There's no Zeth without Cain. There is no Moses without Pharaoh. There is no Joseph without betrayal. And it was shipwreck that releases revival with Paul at Malta. Listen to me, folks. I'm about to close now. You have your close friends. And if they will come to you, they will encourage you. Your family is always support you. But the enemy promote you. No? Listen to me. If there's no enemy against what you are doing for the Lord, you will not grow like that. You will not become beautiful like that. That's why the enemy listening to you right now, when you told to your seatmate, I need an enemy. Hello? If there's something reaction of the enemy... Amen. Prepare your promotion. Hallelujah. As long as you look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, as long you stand to the promises of God. Hallelujah. The enemy always resists. But I have told you before, you should ready for promotion. Come on. <laughs> Because God places enemies on the canvas of your life to print His most beautiful masterpieces. Shall we say amen? Hindi ka maiguguhit ng totoong anak ng Diyos kung wala kang resistance sa buhay mo. Pero habang pinagtatagumpayan mo, as long you overcome those trials, God painting, hallelujah, the canvas of your life to be His masterpiece. Come on, hallelujah! So, can you turn again to the right side? I need an enemy. Huh. 
Oh God. And if the enemy comes to your life with discouragement because he resists your worship, he doesn't want you to release an extravagant worship, he doesn't want you to sing, prepare for your promotion. Because something is going to shape your life. Something is going to fix your life, my friend. Hallelujah. Kaya nga narinig ka ng kaaway. Remember that. Your adversaries are your indicators. I know and I believe, my friend, that God always uses our adversaries for our advantage, for our promotion, for our blessing. I feel the Holy Ghost. To this part of trials that we have, you need the gift today. You need to be filled in the Spirit of God. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Release your worship. Hallelujah. Release your worship in the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Even though there's pain inside of you, there is trial. When you start, release your worship to God. And you can have that gift. Oh, hallelujah! Christian without the power of God is a Christmas without the snow. Oh, come on, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the power of God. Oh, come on. Do not listen to your flesh. That is your enemy to stop your worship. Good boy. Hallelujah.